The Polium 1, a brand new, as in a brand new render, video game system that's completely different and unlike anything you've ever seen before. Now I'm not here to make some bold claim like this isn't the future, we may see something like this in the future, but let me tell you right now, this definitely isn't the future and this definitely will not be a success. In fact, the whole thing is so backwards and stupid that I just had to break my rule of not making a kick scammer video until it's done and dusted because this train wreck is already off the tracks and smashing through your screen. Welcome to Kick Scammers, ladies and gentlemen, the show where I, DJ Slope, look into the world's worst Kickstarters, Indiegogos and GoFundMes, however, today I'm getting in early, before it hits crowdfunding, which it definitely is claiming to do, by the way, in a very odd way. So let's take a look at Polium, crowdfunding's crypto console scam. Welcome to Slope's Game Room. Back in January of 2022, the Twitter page of Polium underscore underscore was created. However, it wasn't until June 26th that we would see the first tweet and more importantly, the console itself. In an article that popped up on medium.com, we get to take a look at the new system. A system that really looks like a standard Now TV box or a fat router. It really is nothing more than that visually. It's not very big and therefore not very powerful, we can only assume, as sitting on top we have a rip-off PlayStation 4 controller complete with the same exact layout, holes and all. It claims to be the world's first multi-chain gaming console, a console being built by the community, whatever that means, and it's capable of running games that are built on different blockchains and you wouldn't need to switch networks to play them on this one system. Wait, what? Networks? Blockchain? Do you ever get that WTF feeling that you've just discovered something that's immensely popular on something that you know very little about? As a gamer that follows companies like Nintendo, Microsoft and Sony and all of the exclusive games that come along with it, have I just stumbled upon a new gaming experience for new systems? Uh, Let's continue. This tiny little box that is pretty much the quarter arcade equivalent to a new age video game console claims that it will be able to run these games in high definition. The highest of high, 8K definition has been one of the buzzwords used to promote this thing, although that was alongside 4K before it quietly got changed on the website. 120 frames per second, ray tracing, things that the Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5 really struggle with, yet the Polium 1, a quarter of the size, can do it with ease. That's because it's been in development since 2001. It's going to form partnerships with game studios to get exclusive content. It's going to be built on top of Linux and it's going to have custom NVIDIA GPU and CPU hardware inside. Ooh. And as impressive as all this is, which, you know, it definitely is, Again, guys, remember, this is all doing things that the Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, and even 90% of gaming PC rigs can't do. Forget all that, because for someone like me, the most exciting thing about the Polium 1 is that it will be a gateway to be able to play all of these brand new gaming experiences, which are on Web 3.0, apparently. Games that a few days ago, we didn't even know existed. But what the hell is Web 3.0? Does it have the fourth Tomb Raider game on it? Is Sega gonna release a special edition Sonic Origin 3.0 bundle? Well, I don't know, they might. Look, before going ahead, let's try and explain what this actually offers, outside of its wild specs. For those that don't understand, let's go back to the beginning and explain Web 3.0 and the rising Web 3.0 gaming space, before we so obviously expose this bad boy. A timestamp will be down below if you wanna skip this little history piece. Now I suppose the best way to explain all of this is to start with Web 1.0, which is essentially the old internet. When I looked it up, the simplest description was that it was simply text on a screen, often referred to as read only. 
you would search for something, you would read that something, and that's really it. No interaction and very limited content generation was going on here, it was kind of like Wikipedia, but written by someone else that you couldn't edit, all linked together so that we, the consumer, would simply consume, if we knew where to find it, of course. As time moved on into the early noughties, that giant encyclopedia become more playable and interactive, which brings us to web 2.0 no longer were we simply consumers of information giving nothing more back than a simple digit on a ticker at the bottom of your favorite lincoln park fan site now we're being watched and no i don't mean via your webcam although obviously there have been reports of that nope what i'm talking about is a website taking information data about us and our browsing habits and then using that information to hopefully get you to stay on their website to either spend more money in their shop or more commonly see more ads. Honestly, this isn't that big of a deal. Why would we even want to see adverts that are not tailored to us? Right? Well, not only do you probably not agree with that statement, but as time moved on, not only did these websites fill up databases full of our preferred internet pastimes, um, they very quickly, and thanks to us, I might add, a lot of these websites got our personal information too. Our name, our address, our age, our bank account details, the details of our partner, your kids, your hobbies, your location, at this very second, everything. You sitting right there, in case you didn't know, they have your information stored all over the world in the cloud, aka random hard drives all over the world. Again, this may not be that big of a deal to you. You may be thinking, hey, it doesn't affect you, I suppose, until you realize that that information is being sold, or at least in a few instances, it has been sold before. Because if Mr. Shopkeeper has a product that he or she want to sell, it would obviously be better to sell that product to someone that's actually interested, right? And all of the major corporations that you have signed up to, who, of course, have that information, well, you can be damn sure that they will sell your data if they can get away with it to, obviously, Mr. Shopkeeper. Which, again, has definitely happened in the past with your data. Later. Mr. Zuckerberg wanted me to thank you guys for his new house extension. <laughs> Only joking. He isn't thankful. You know who is thankful? I'm thankful. On YouTube, clicking the thumbs up, subscribing, commenting, sharing, watching for long periods of time, and even watching more videos from the same channel tells the Web 2.0, aka the algorithm, that more people should watch content on this channel. So let's stick it to the man, yeah, guys, and uh, do all of those things. Anyway, that's Web 2.0. You can see the pros, you can see the cons. Let's move to Web 3.0. Web 3.0 is kind of the middle ground between 2 and 1, while still being its own thing. Instead of you, the consumer, being sold to, like in 2.0, in 3.0, you own your content. You have total control of that content, making you the owner of that content. Now, how is that any different than this, what you're watching right now? Heck, I've made this video. I own this video. I'm going to make money off this video because you're watching it. So what's the difference? Well, let's say I decide to wear a pointy white hat, get my boobs out, or, I don't know, say something that offends people. The algorithm is obviously not going to like that, and therefore YouTube, of course, isn't going to promote that. Perfect example, this video that you see right here is about, well, that guy you see in the thumbnail. It's not slanderous, it's not political, it's simply about a thing that happened that featured that guy. And the day after its release, it went from being the number one most popular video that I had released out of the last 10, all the way down to the number 10 spot. Why? Well, this may be me reaching, you guys decide, but almost 600 videos in on this channel, I think I know how it works. My educated guess is that it wasn't shared by YouTube the same way other videos that don't feature this guy do because, well, it features this guy. He who will not be named because, well, I don't want to upset 2.0. Now in Web 3.0, I supposedly wouldn't have these issues. By using blockchain technology and decentralization, this content just wouldn't be blocked. It would be completely fine for me to upload whatever I want. 
Websites like this actually already exist. For instance, Odyssey shows a homepage that isn't filled with paid to be there American talk show clips, but instead it's all homemade content of all shapes and sizes, giving you, arguably, a fairer viewing experience. Now this may sound good, but of course, it too has its drawbacks. It's all fine and dandy to have complete freedom to post whatever we want, but well, do I even need to finish that sentence? Imagine if I wore a white pointy hat, got my boobs out, or said something that would be incredibly offensive to people. It wouldn't matter on Web 3.0. I suppose the big question here is, what's more important to the individual? Is it complete freedom to post whatever I want with no consequences whatsoever? Or being protectful of the wider market and not being able to post whatever I want because of reasons. There is no right answer. And of course, guys, please do understand that this is just a very basic explanation on the idea that it is 3.0, but hopefully I did a good enough job simplifying it for you, chatting about something that, you know, is personal to me. It's the best way that I can explain it. Regardless of all that, this new Polium console is using Web 3.0, which again is built using blockchain and decentralized technology, which if you didn't know, has dedicated games on each blockchain, and this system will merge all all of them together to allow someone like me to access them all. Kind of like having a PlayStation 5 Series X that has a Steam client included and a hole to ram in your Switch cartridges, the Polium 1 will do all of that if all you want is blockchain video games. It's essentially the Ben Heck of blockchain video game consoles. The only difference is, and this really is an opinion piece by this point guys, after spending time researching games built around crypto, obviously what you are actually getting is games that encourage you to use crypto. For example, and this comes directly from D2K, the community manager on the Polium, will Polium run Doom? If Doom releases a blockchain game and if the developers want to publish their game on the console, then yes. <laughs> Look, let's hope the Polium is a console, is one of the only devices in the world that can't play Doom. All of that loot crate bollocks and pay to win guff isn't a million miles away from what these gaming experiences offer. Although it's not pay to win anymore, this is more pay to earn. Could this stupidly powerful system run Doom? I mean, of course it could, but do we want a Doom game that changes up its gameplay style instead focusing on owning in-game NFTs that you can then flip for a profit? Not to sound like an old fart, but this isn't what gaming is all about. It's essentially what everyone in the wider world, or at least in my circles, constantly complain about. Gaming should be fun, it should be artistic, it should offer you know, gaming experiences and not be based around DLC that you guys own and therefore you guys can flip to make them more money. A perfect example for people outside of the world of crypto is Team Fortress 2. Great game. Even if it's not for you, hey, it's not really for me, it's still a great game. But when trading hats became so popular due to the absolute boom in rocketing prices when trading them, the game shifted, for a large group of people at least, into people buying and selling cosmetic hats. It was a dark time for true fans of the game. That's not to say that these crypto games are not overwhelmingly popular, they definitely are to the right type of people, but if you ask me, these people are playing these games for the wrong reasons. Look, hey, if you guys or if someone out there is obsessed with these weird crypto experiences, let me know down below of a good one because I'm yet to find anything that excites me in any way, shape or form. I personally like to spend my time between AAA experiences and newly crafted gaming experiences that push the boundaries rather than just sit in this brick wall world where everything is made around Bitcoin being the driving force, aka in-game currency. No different than 99% of the crap that you see on mobile phones. In fact, if you ask me, it's even worse. These games keep you playing because of ruthless addictiveness, whereas blockchain gaming's driving force is essentially you earning money. Anyway, that's a quick rundown on the kind of experiences that you would expect on a console like this, and an even quicker rundown on the hardware on a system like this. Let's finally rip it apart. Firstly, 
nothing shown in anything I have seen during my research or the games found in their mock-up store would need a system that's more powerful than the most powerful gaming systems on the market. It's like building up the most amazing rig of a gaming PC and then only running Honey Kong on it. It's a stupid thing to do considering well, it's never gonna happen anyway. This is, unsurprisingly, not a real thing. There's no custom Nvidia chips going into this thing. It's being run by four guys who, like always, have a dream, a bloody stupid dream, and nothing more. Even the logo, unsurprisingly, is a completely stolen asset. And yes, even though everyone is comparing this to the GameCube, <laughs> no, no, no. How about the source code management tool logo for Plastic SCM? The Pebble Host server um, service looks mighty familiar. Primordial radio, polygon textures. The awesome PQ publisher has a very similar thing going on here too. Heck, even cardboard box distributor cluster pack uses the same logo. I suppose the better way of explaining it is that this isn't, you know, actually stolen. It's just an asset that they've used that loads of other companies have used. <laughs> In fact, even the console itself is an asset that they've pulled in and just ever so slightly modified. Look at this, this is the Oasis, yet another system that looks identical to this. Yeah, this design is definitely not final. Well, what am I saying? This ain't ever coming out. It's obvious the team behind this have absolutely no idea what they're doing making it up as they go along. In fact, on July 4th, they announced that they would change the logo, which now, if you ask me, looks even worse than it did before. What the hell is this? They claim that they have hardware and software experience. I mean, I don't know, they might do, but they failed to go into detail about what that exactly is. I mean, I have experience in those fields too, I suppose. Want to buy a console? They claim the system will have exclusive games but fail to give any evidence whatsoever and all they ask is that you join their Discord, which obviously I did. I joined up to the Polium Discord, I said hello, wanting to know more about the system, several people who recognise me, <laughs> oh shucks you guys, told me it was shit, all those comments then instantly got deleted by an unknown mod, I acknowledged that they got deleted and then I was put on a one hour timeout. All within five minutes of joining. I then went and asked why I was put on a timeout in the designated question area to then have my question removed, not being able to answer another question for another hour. Seriously, the Discord is an absolute joke and a good one at that. Even the food channel is constantly getting filled up with hentai. It's, it's just too good, guys. All of this made me want to make this video. Fantastic community support aside, I was able to sift through the Q&A with the help of a few other people that were also looking on my behalf in case I got kicked, and this is what I discovered. In order to buy a Polium 1, you need a Polium Pass, essentially an online wallet which you will need to purchase with Ethereum coin. And by the way, guys, if you haven't worked it out yet, this is how they plan to actually crowdfund this thing by enticing people onto the blockchain. When asked about how this tiny set-top box can outperform game systems, the official response was, we discovered a way to allow 8K120 with ray tracing, but we will confirm after the prototype. Okay, when people contested this, they simply explained that the design is confirmed, but we will try a few dimensions during prototype stages. Okay! They will be using both ARM64 CPUs as well as X64 CPUs too. <laughs> okay, okay. Because this is obviously just more made up crap. These are two entirely different CPUs, in case you didn't know, used in two different types of machines. It's like having a system that's as powerful as a laptop, but also as powerful as a mobile phone. It, 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 it just doesn't make sense. Everything, once again, is an absolute pipe dream. We've seen it all before. We've seen this so many times times before, but unlike systems like the Ouya and even the Amico, which this device is getting compared to, this will never get to those stages. Heck if it does, I am willing to be proven wrong, but the harder these guys push, the easier it is for me to make content like this. 
Look, there's no point in denying that a market exists for those that dabble within the world of crypto and play these terrible play-to-earn type games. They of course do, and that market is huge, really huge. That's why I still believe that something may possibly one day exist, but when it does, it'll be fighting against your own PC. Your PC that runs a browser and plays these terrible, terrible games. If you want to get into this, that's all you need. Technically, you have the power of the Polium 1 on whatever device you're watching this on. It doesn't need to be an all-powerful machine with a bloody fingerprint scanner. Oh yes, because obviously that's going to actually stop all of the crypto robberies that happen on the back end, isn't it? And whilst we are at it, this was originally advertised as Touch ID technology, aka Apple's official term for this technology, which they then quietly changed on the website. Oh my god! All of this is for a million ideas at the wall at the same time to make something look good when in actual fact all they are doing is making themselves look stupid, really, really stupid. All these four guys care about is the money. This entire thing is based on making money rather than creating a new gaming experience. It's like a bloody pyramid scheme. The more people they can get in, the more money they will make, which of course they can do with ease as the controller has a wallet button right there allowing you to on the fly right in the middle of your gaming experience check your nfts and sell them and therefore make them more money you can see the kind of people that this system is aiming for everything about this sucks it's disgusting it's gross am i excited for it <laughs> from a kick scammer content point of view hell yes but in every single other aspect of my being. I'd rather spend my time watching overreactions to FIFA unboxing videos. God, this is so crap. Bring back the N64 kid, I say, the OG unboxing overreactor. Supporters.slopesgameroom.com is the website that you need to visit in order to get access to absolutely everything I have ever done, past, present, and future. Directors cut versions filled with content that YouTube do not allow, all completely ad free. An insane amount of extras that have never been released. And as I finally get ready to go on holiday in a few weeks, long, long overdue, I'm currently prepping plenty of videos to be released whilst I'm gone, all of which will be available first right here at supporters.slopesgameroom.com where you can get access to all of this content by becoming a Patreon or YouTube member. Just like all of these awesome people do. Ashley Philpott, Benjamin Guy, Big Rico, Boots and Pup, Bram Perez, Chev Matic, uh, Christopher Devero, Clan Bob, Conrad Constantine, De Action Saxon, Dina, Dina81, Game Apologist, Gary Pinkett, Ian Quell, Intrigued Gaming, Ataki Teacher, The Ashen Knight, James Manchild, Jabba Al Aiden, James, Jeff Mianowski, Jeremy Bauer, Jeremy Rodriguez, John Rogers, Lucas Softel, Man Shovel, Matt Jackson, Mike uh, Mook Baggins, sorry, uh, Michael Ridley Dash, Mike Fallon, Mind of the Unsane, Nicholas Burton, and Nick Pollard over Giles Zane, Roll VP, Ray Blair, Retro to Next Gen, aka Lou, Richard Aldrich, Rovan Army, Sir Nielsen, Shade, Silent, Shadow Dragon, Shappy, Sullex Captor, Taylor Rainwater, That Gamer, The Old Man Cometh, The Sneaky Ferret, Tim Lund, Todd Paul Float G, Vitas Varnes, Vike Echoes, and Wobbles and Bean, the, the Wonder Ducks, and the Old Hamburglar. As stated, guys, if you want to get your name shown, your name shouted out, and check out everything I just showed off, then become a Patreon or YouTube member. But until next time, this is DJ Soap signing out, and hopefully I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.